All right, so 2025 is coming up and your YouTube fee is going to be filled with these clickbait videos of some random guys with their mouths open and some clickbait thumbnails talking to you about this revolutionary tech stack. In this sea of pollution, I actually want to make a video that you deserve, that you should see, that has no BS and that's coming from an engineer that has six years of experience. I'm going to tell you in this video what actually works for me and what I plan on using. And to make this even better for you, you have everything in the sidebar here that I'm going to talk about. So we can avoid this clickbaity thumbnails and we're going to get straight to the point. The first thing that you want to do is install VSL if you're on Windows. VSL will give you a Linux operating system on your Windows machine, which will make it 10 times easier to develop because it's Linux is a Unix based system. So you will have the same setup as if you were on Mac OS or on Linux. VSL is something that you should be using and that I use actively daily on my machine. The next thing you want to use is a good IDE. I use WebStorm from JetBrains. It's a great IDE. It gives me everything that I need. It supports the frameworks that I want and it's really easy to set up. You can try this IDE, WebStorm. It's free for non-commercial use. So you can just install JetBrains toolbox and install the, web, the WebStorm IDE. Apart from the IDE, you will actually need a code editor for some small changes while you're working. So for that, I suggest NeoVim, which is which has a steeper learning curve, but it's a really great tool for quickly editing code. And of course, Visual Studio Code. It's not a fully functioning IDE. You can make it with some plugins, but WebStorm should be your IDE for huge projects. Now, after you set up your editors and IDEs and operating systems, there's something we should talk about and it's AI. It's very important in today's world. And in 2025, I think it will, be, it will be even more important. What I'm using for AI is Claude. I don't use GPT. I think Claude is way better. Claude gives me way better ideas. It writes better code and it actually helps me brainstorm things through. It sounds authentic. And when I visit Claude, I actually feel like I'm sitting at an expensive table with someone that's willing to help me. When I visit GPT, it sounds like it's an overworked horse that just doesn't want to do it anymore and is there just for the sake of it. Now, after you try out Claude, you should read up on Docker. If you don't know what Docker is, after this video, stop everything and read up on Docker. It's going to save you so many hours of debugging and solving problems that you don't know why they even exist. Docker is the go-to for containerizing things and not actually installing on bare metal. So Docker is something that you need to learn if you don't already know. But if you, if you do know, Docker is the way to go. Now, after setting up Docker, you will know how to set up open web UI and Open Web UI is a UI that's used to chat with these models. It uses Olama under the hood. And this is the UI I'm using. You should use Open Web UI if you have a good enough graphics card. And it's going to give you an edge over everyone else. Since Open Web UI can give you the ability to talk with any other models, LLMs that are open source for brainstorming, for ideas, and for actual coding. Now, after you set up this, we actually need to write the business logic and write the code. And we have to decide what we're going to be using. And we have three options here. We have V, we have Next.js, and we have Remix. I'm using React. I write in React, and React is my go-to thing. Now, you have to decide which tool we should be using or which meta framework. And there's a very simple case. You don't need to complicate this. If we are using, if we're writing private dashboards, some apps that are not for the public, not a landing page, we should be using V and React. Use TypeScript, use React. You use Vite, it's that simple. You don't need any of these advanced, complex, uh, static site generators and so on. You just need a simple React, fra React framework. You need some build tool that will help you with working with React and that's it. But on the other hand, if you're writing a landing page or something that's accessible to the public, you need good CEO and you need server-side rendering most of the time so that the files can be properly indexed and you can actually show up on the Google search or any other search. And that's where you should just use Next.js or Remix. And what I'm personally using is one of these two. I like trying both of them out since they're constantly changing. So you can just pick any of these two frameworks for landing pages and something that's publicly accessible. So now you know which framework to use and what your application is about. 
we actually have to make these styles for the application. And styling is a very complex topic that I can't get into just one video. So that's why I'm just going to simplify this and I'm going to say use Tailwind. I've used CSS, CSS, I've used SAS over my years working. Tailwind has offered me something that none of these other tools have and it's just simplicity and bug-free code. I've seen so many teams working on styling with CSS or SAS and in some minor PR where there's like six changes, six lines of changes, some other page breaks. Why? Because hierarchy of these files is very hard to maintain over time. And Tailwind helps me not create regression issues and bugs with styling bugs with it. So for me, I'm going Tailwind and I'm not looking back. Now, the next thing is what do we use for our components? We do not want to invent hot water, as they say, and write trivial logic that we already know. So for, so for example, drop downs, popovers, any of the standard UI things that we need, models and so on. We should use something that's already implemented, that's stable and that already works. And if you need customizability, you want the code to be on your side and you want to change it, you should use something like ShadCN or any other headless UI library that will allow you to actually modify everything about the code almost everything 95 percent of it if you don't need that and the ui is not really the important part you need the functionality or you're some building some dashboard and the people on the other side don't care that much about the ui you should use Mantine. I'm using Mantine for everything that's not specifically UI related. It has so many components. It has color scheme support. You can add themes. It has custom hooks that you can use, which are really useful for you. So I suggest Mantine if the UI, customizability of the UI and the specific nature of the UI is not as important. There's one more thing about the UI and that's animations and icons. It's two more things. For animations, you should use frame or motion. And that's a no contest because it's easy to use. It's free. It's really advanced. You can create many different things with frame or motion and it's the go-to for me. I've I've tried React Spring and some other libraries uh, a while back. There's no just, there's just no contest context. You can try it out. Really easy to use. And after you tried motion, frame or motion, there's just no contest for me. Frame motion is the thing for animations and for icons. I'm using Lucid. I'm gonna pronounce it like that. This is a great icon pack. It integrates really well with what you're doing. It's easy to use, and you can see you can. Go to get started, you can choose react, you install it with npm, pmpm or whatever you're using and you can just add the icon. It's that easy and it's easily customizable with color size. You can even add class names to it with Tailwind to have full customizability. UI is not just about styling. It also has lots of logic. We need to handle authentication, we need to handle forms, we need to handle, handle lots of data. And that's why for the global state management, I'm using Zustand. Zustand is a really simple, dead simple state management library that I use for everything that I do from my work to my personal projects to business to my business, everything that I do, I use Zustand and it's really simple to use. It integrates well with TypeScript. You can add types and it's performant. So there's just no contest for the simplicity and the functionality that it provides. The next thing, if you're handling lots of forms and you should be in most applications is using React Hook Form. It's tried, true, stable, it works well, it has great type support, and React Hook Form just gives you the ability, gives you the abstractions that you need so you, that you don't write for each field a use state hook, and for that hook you have to actually trigger, add events, on value changes, and so on. Your React Hook Form really simplifies this and gives you lots and lots of good abstractions that you can use. Also, it's performant. It allows you to not actually bug your UI out when you're changing something and cause a million re-renders. And now for networking, we should most of the time use Tanstack query. And I say most of the time because if we're building a landing page and I need only a couple of requests, I should not be using Tanstack query. You can go to Next.js or Remix, whatever you're using, and you can see that they have their own strategies on how to fetch data and to fetch it on the server side and then just show it without any loading states. That's what you actually need. And in that case, I think Tanstack query is a bit overkill but that's the query really shines when you need abstractions for something that's fetched on the client side so for example you're building a private dashboard 
and it has lots of ifs, whens, and thens. It has complex logic, and it doesn't work as it's not as streamlined as a landing page. That's where tense the query shines, where you can actually have caching, you can have uh, revalidation, and everything else that comes with it. So if you're making complex networking requests, tense the query is the way to go. Now you've built your app and you need to test it. For end-to-end -end tests, I recommend Playwright. It's really easy to use. It's performant, it's fast, it's reliable, it offers parallelism, it offers support for Safari and Firefox and Chromium and Google Chrome and many of these browsers. It's really easy to use. The code generation is good. It provides good debug. It has a trace viewer, which you should check out what it is in Playwright. And it has a great inspector. I am all for Playwright. Cypress is also good, but Cypress is getting a bit stale and they have their own problems. So if you're starting off fresh and you or you can rewrite all the end-to-end -end tests, Playwright is the way to go. But if you can't, then you should just stick with Cypress and continue working on until there's a better time where you can actually move to Playwright. I'm using Playwright for all my end-to-end -end uh, testing and I've never been disappointed. Playwright is the way to go. But apart from Playwright, you actually need to see what's cr crashing your application, what's happening, because you don't know what a user's gonna click and what's gonna happen. So that's why I recommend Sentry. Sentry is a really good performance monitoring tool and a logging tool for all the errors that can happen. So for example, if something, someone crashes, clicks a button and crashes your application, you have to see what's happening, what that person clicked, which URL they visited and how it all happened. And that's where Sentry comes in mind. Sentry is really good. It's used by many different companies and it's a software that's gonna be worth integrating in your application if you have something critical working on. Now for the backend part. Most of our applications need some kind of backend to store data. And for that, one of the recommendations I'm giving to you is Django. I'm using Django for most of my projects today. And Django is something that's full of batteries included. It gives you lots of things that you don't need to implement, trivial things, some also not trivial. It has a built-in admin dashboard and it's a really good thing. It's going to help you write less code and give more features. It also has REST API support, so you can go to Django REST framework. And for most people today, they have problems with authentication. Django is so easy to use with authentication. You can set up authentication incredibly easily with it and then add it to your web application. Now, if you need only an API, and most of the time you only need an API and you want something that's fully asynchronous, then you should go with FastAPI. FastAPI has become a very popular backend framework. It's written in Python, just like Django, and it's really fast. It's fast compared to these other sy synchronous frameworks. It's something that I recommend, for example, if you want to work with some machine learning models and you need interaction with them, most of the time you're going to be using FastAPI and that's what most people actually use. So FastAPI is my go-to when I'm in need of an API only. And the final backend framework that I recommend in 2025 and that I'm using is Laravel. Laravel is the king of batteries included. It has almost everything that you will need from social authentication to regular authentication to workers to schedulers to jobs to emails to everything that you might need. Laravel is really good, helps you streamline feature implementations like none other. If you need to quickly make a backend for your application, Laravel is the way to go. Laravel is built in PHP and PHP has its ups and downs and it has some security vulnerabilities that it, over the years. But the Laravel team made this such an enjoyment to work with that I have to recommend it. I tried it out and I really liked it. So Laravel is the thing that I'm going to be using. And that's about it. These are the things that I have been using and that I will use in 2025 and that have not given up on me. I've delivered projects with these technologies and there were no complaints. So I've suggested you to actually use this, try it out, skip on the hype and do something that's production worthy. If I missed something, please tell me in the comments. And if you want more videos like this, please leave a comment, like, and I'll see you next time.